Now that we've given an overview of Java Lambda expressions and method references, it's time to turn our attention to Java functional interfaces. In this part of the lesson, we'll explain what functional interfaces are and also describe how they can be used in conjunction with Java Lambda expressions and method references. All these features form the basis for other parts of functional Java, including Java streams, as well as its concurrency and parallelism frameworks, such as Java parallel streams and Java completable futures. A functional interface is an interface that contains just one abstract method. You've already seen examples of this before if you've worked with Java for any length of time. For example, runnable is a functional interface. It only has one method, run, that's abstract. Likewise, callable is also a functional interface. It only has one method, call. A functional interface is the type that's used for a parameter when a Lambda expression or a method reference is passed as an argument to a Java method. Let's take a look at an example. You can find this example at the link in the bottom of the slide, which is part of my GitHub repository. So we have a method here that's called run test, which is a useful, reusable helper method. And the purpose of this method is to record and print the time that's taken to compute the nth factorial. And you can see here, of course, you know what factorial is, I'm sure. So five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. That gets the result of a factorial. The fact parameter that's passed to the run test method is actually a function functional interface. And this is what's used to parameterize the factorial implementation. And you can see here that's what's passed in is a generic function called fact and a parameter n of they're all of type t. And then after we record the initial system time, we call fact.apply. And we'll see later that's the that's the one method that's defined in a function. And that will go ahead and run the factorial computation. And thereby we can do behavior parameterization. Here's an example of how we can use this run test method. Actually, two examples. You can see how we call run test with parallel stream factorial colon colon factorial, which is a method reference, as well as sequential stream factorial colon colon factorial, which is a sequential version. And these different methods can be passed as parameters to the run test method. This is a classic example of behavior parameterization. Just for kicks, we'll take a really quick look at the implementation of the parallel stream factorial factorial method. And you can see it takes a big integer as a parameter and it returns a big integer. And what it does is it generates a range of values from one to n, where n is the big integer. And then we go ahead and in parallel using Java parallel streams, convert each of those long values to a big integer by using the map to obj intermediate operation, passing in a method reference for big integer value of that converts the long to a big integer. And then we use the reduce terminal operation that's part of the Java streams framework to take each of those values that's in that range and pairwise multiply them together, starting with the initial value of one as the seed value. And when we're all done, we will have reduced things to the factorial. And all this will take place in parallel. So let's talk very quickly about some of the common functional interfaces that are defined in Java. Java defines many, many types of functional interfaces. If you take a look at the package for Java util function, you will see the definition for all these different functional interfaces. Some of these interfaces handle so-called reference types. These are things like string or integer with a capital I or other things that you might define as user-defined types like an account or an employee record or whatnot. Other types of interfaces that are part of the functional interface package support so-called primitive types. These are things like int or long or other things that are built-in types. So those are handled in a separate way. That's because Java has two different type systems, one for kind of the prim primitive native types and another for the so-called reference types. The reason why we have these two different flavors of predefined functional interfaces is to avoid the overhead of so-called auto boxing which would otherwise occur if everything had to be converted into a reference type and used with one type of functional interface. As a consequence, there's an explosion of Java functional interfaces. So what you need to do is when you start trying to use a functional interface, you're well advised to take a look at the Java util function package first and see what's already defined before you start trying to define your own functional interfaces. And that'll just make your life a lot easier because you won't waste time reinventing the wheel. We're gonna focus in the next parts of this lesson on some of the most common types of functional interfaces, including predicate, function, bifunction, supplier, and consumer. 
And you'll see that there's many others besides those, but those are ones we're going to look at. And we're going to look at them for two reasons. Number one, they're very common. And secondly, they tend to be used quite a bit with Java streams and the Java streams framework, which is a more advanced form of functional programming with Java and modern Java. Interestingly enough, all the examples we're about to look at and all the other parts of this lesson are all examples of stateless functional interface utilization. So again, we're trying to keep things lightweight. We're trying to make them re real easy to use to avoid side effects, which is key for functional programming. And it comes in very handy when we start doing concurrent and parallel processing, because we have a lot less to worry about in terms of shared mutable state, which as you may recall is the root of all evil in concurrent and parallel programming. So that's the end of our overview of Java functional interfaces. The rest of the parts of this lesson will then take a look at those five functional interfaces that are most common.